Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 5 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series, Season 9. Uh, just did a little bit of mining off camera, and repairing my hammer, which I did wind up uh, replacing one of the parts with iron, so that I could repair it with iron, so that's pretty cool. Um, we totally need to still uh, repair my pickaxe with cobalt, but... Pickaxes repair a lot easier than iron, so it's not that big a deal. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, one of the things I want to start off with is upgrading my pickaxe, as a matter of fact. How much lapis do I have? Man, not, not as much as I would have liked to have seen. Um, if I, How much lapis do I need? 60 uh, to, get fortune, to get luck one. So I guess I'll use it. Why not? So I'll get me luck one. I'm gonna have to throw more lapis on there if I want higher tier versions of luck. But at least now when I go mining, there's a reason to use my pick over my hammer um, for stuff like coal and redstone and lapis. So that's good. Um, what should we work on today? Lots of good stuff we could do. Um, let's see, how's my resources doing? Not terrible, actually. Um, one thing that I'm finding <clears throat> a lot when I'm mining is that I'm getting a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily need. So for that, I'd like to, to start working on getting a dank null. Uh, <clears throat> so the dank null needs five redstone. So there's different tiers of it. Um, there's lapis, redstone, iron, uh, gold, diamond, and emerald. And I am going to assume, and there's a docking station as well. Ooh, information, cool. Cool, so you can use the docking station to empty the dank null. So this is a pretty neat gadget. Um, so we need five of these panels to get the redstone one. And wow, that's a lot of redstone and coal. We need five of those? That seems really expensive. So I guess it might be craftable. I mean, I hope it does what I think it does. Dank Null is one of the mods that uh, looks like I know what it does, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, before I know for sure, for sure, I'm going to need uh, some red dye. <clears throat> so let's go get uh, a poppy. I think I see one really, really far off in this direction. Yay. Ooh, rose flowers too. Nice. Those will come in handy later. <clears throat> So let's see if this thing does what I think it does. Uh, so I think first I'm gonna need some glass around the red dye. And then we're gonna want this. And then we're gonna want, if my math is right, three stacks each of coal and redstone. So there's a lot of coal and redstone, but once my mining is more efficient, we'll wind up getting more coal and redstone anyway. That's the, those are the two resources that, in fairness, you tend to have a lot of. Um, so for that dank null, we're going to need 20 of you and 20 of you. And then I should have enough to make five of these. And I can make, that is not what I clicked. Cool, dank null. Neat. Uh, and then I can convert you guys back to dust and store the remainder. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> so the way the dank null works is as follows. What I should be able to do is grab some of the resources that we don't need a particularly large amount of. Uh, so things like andesite and diorite and cobblestone and granite. All the stuff that we get like tons of underground that we don't necessarily uh, want to have cluttering up our inventory. And I believe what I can do is shift right click, ooh, that's a fancy UI, and just place it in there. Cool. Um, and I think, all right, yeah, so you alt left click to select which, okay, cool, I see. So if I put these guys in that way, it doesn't matter, but you can alt left click, I believe. So there you go, select it. So see how it has cobblestone on the dev null now? Cool. There you go. Yeah, now it's cobblestone. Um, neat. So that could technically go in this slot because I shouldn't need it anymore. Now what should happen is it should automatically pick up any cobblestone that I get. 
Cool. See? Cobblestone. And I'll do the same for diorite and granite and andesite and limestone. And uh, I've got four more slots that I can go ahead and fill up with that. Neat. So if we were to go mining, for example, and so let's just try it like right in here, right? As I mine resources, all the cobblestone will go into the dank null. Now the tier one can store, I want to say it's two stacks. Um, yeah, up to two stacks per slot. So what will happen is as I start getting more and more cobblestone, right, it'll fill up to two stacks of the inventory, but then it's going to start voiding it beyond that which is pretty much what I would like to see happen. Um, you can upgrade it to higher tiers and it'll have more inventory slots and it'll have more storage potential for those items. Um, it can get more and more um, stack sizes basically. So instead of having two stacks of cobblestone, it'll have like four. I don't know what the second tier actually is, but that's the idea. Nice. Since I'm here, I might as well get more cobblestone and to demonstrate and more coal. So as you pick up all this cobblestone, it's at 128, but look, there's cobble here. I'm going to go pick it up. It doesn't go into my inventory. It goes in the dank null, and it voids anything above 128. How cool is that? So that will absolutely help um, with any mining that you're doing. Um, get a dank null pretty much as soon as you can, because one thing you're going to find as you mine is you're just going to fill up on tons and tons and tons of stuff like cobblestone, granite, diorite, etc. And having the dank null will definitely help you pretty much be able to manage your inventory better. So see like all this cobblestone I just mined? It's not my inventory. Never picked it up. It all went into the dank null and past 128 it's full. And by the way, you can right click with the dank null to place uh, whatever's highlighted. So, you know, if you alt left click and you want to place diorite, you can. Neat. Um, and alt left click to change it again and you can place cobble. Pretty slick. All right, guys, so melted up a little bit more cobalt here so I can repair my pick. The next thing I want to work on today, I think, is progressing uh, with some thermal type mods. Because uh, thermal is going to give us access to lots of good uh, tools and resources. There's a bunch of nifty stuff in thermal expansion that I frankly haven't played with in a while. So I'm excited to get back into. Um, I think the next thing we should work at is getting more power uh, from thermal expansion. Uh, so we're going to want a dynamo. Uh, there's a bunch of different types that we can go with. Probably the next most obvious one to go with is the magmatic dynamo that just runs on lava based power um so basically you throw lava in there and it generates power that's all there is to it um then there's like compression dynamo uh that has a bunch of recipes uh generates based on fluid fuel and coolant so there's a bunch of different recipes we can see here um there's also uh let's see reactant dynamo there's uh enervation dynamo runs on redstone basically it looks like um pneumostatic dynamo which runs on these coin things but for the most part we'll probably want to look at stuff like that um now we can also by the way get some good stuff for power gen so like there's uh let's see i know there's something you can get from trees tree oil yeah tree oil from thermal gets you about a million rf per bucket of tree oil that's cool um let's see what else is here like with that coal refined fuel gets you two million rf per refined coal, that's cool. So that comes from naphtha, which comes from crude oil. Okay. <laughs> so I wonder where we can get crude oil from. Either from bitumen or oil shale, which I guess we find on the ground, or oil sand. These are all things to consider. But we can also get that tree oil stuff. That's another option from the compression dynamo. Uh, so let's see, biofuel, naphtha, Let's look at the thermal liquids. So I'm assuming they will be listed here somewhere under thermal foundation. There they all are. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ones. Tree oil, I guess, comes from resin. So there's a whole processing method for tree oil. Um, basically, resin comes from uh, grinding up wood. Neat. So that might be another alternative to, to, to getting fuel. Uh, we will probably want to look into doing some of this stuff. Um, but before we get into it, let's get the basics down. Does that sound cool? Um, so to get that, let's do uh, some advanced stuff. So I want to get into magmatic dynamos. That'll probably be the first one I get into, and then we'll look at other ones in the future. For that, we're going to need invar. There's a couple different ways we can get invar. Um, we can totally make uh, invar in the tinker smeltery. There's uh, an alloying method of basically, one. it's two iron to one nickel. 
So that's one option. Uh, but the other option for making in-bar, which is probably a little bit easier, uh, would be the induction smelter. This, you should be able to just drop your iron ingots in and it'll, it'll mix them up together right away. Um, so I would like to get an induction smelter if we can, uh, but the induction smelter requires a bit of invar. So it looks like we'll be getting invar the old fashioned way. Either smeltering, or we can also just grind up dusts because invar dust is a thing that you can make by hand uh, using two crushed iron dust uh, and, and some nickel. So basically two iron plus one nickel, either in dust or, or metal form will work. So um, how, do you, how much of this stuff do you get from casting it uh, when you do, so two to one gets you 144 millibuckets. Okay, so that's probably, so I'm going to say it's three. So if we did six iron and three nickel, and three nickel, if we did that ratio, we'd get a block. So let's double that and do 12 and six. And we'll go throw it in our smeltery out here. Uh, my hopper, I moved inside. And to be fair, I should probably just make another hopper. Because iron is not something that we are low on. So a couple different ways we could have gone about getting ourselves what we need, but eh, no biggie. I'm also going to dump this out of here, and I should probably also clear out the bronze. Not that it'll hurt, it doesn't mix with anything in there, but um, that way we just keep this thing clean, right? Two, three. I think that's how much bronze was in there. Nice. Okay, that can go into our metals chest, along with, I guess, the cobalt. This has kind of become the de facto metals chest. Smooth stone can go in here, and black quartz from actual additions can go in there. And if I remember correctly, I guess, I thought nickel smelted a little bit faster, but it's not that fast. All right, back in one minute when this is done melting. Looking good to me. There we go. Molten in bar, two blocks worth. Let's just pour that out into the casting basin, and I'll be back when that has cooled. Okay, we've got invar blocks. Nice. So we can convert those to invar ingots. Hopefully that's enough uh, to get us this next machine that I want to make. So uh, this is called the induction furnace. Dun, dun, dun. Induction smelter needs a bucket, needs a machine frame, redstone reception coil, some invar gear. So we need 10 invar in total so we should have enough and the machine frame which needs some tin uh so let's grab uh some iron and some tin uh we'll need the invar that we have on us and that should be pretty close to good right yeah we'll also need some redstone uh and we may need a little bit of gold as well cool so uh we'll want one of these we will want one two of these we will want a bucket and we will want a tin gear. Oh, and four glass. Always forget that part. And that should be good. That is good. Induction smelter go. Nice. All right, so now that we've got an induction smelter, uh, we can start making Invar a little bit easier uh, than we have in the past. Where did I put those leadstone dudes? There they are, okay. Not the first place I would have assumed to have put them, but that works. So we'll just close off all the sides here. Now if we want to make more invar, right? Uh, it's easy, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, boom. And it'll just start smelting it up right away. And that uses 20 R of a tick. We can upgrade this machine as well. All the machines are upgradable. But uh, for now, we don't want to do that because that's going to wind up costing more power. Uh, and more power is going to be more trouble. Um, out of curiosity, do we have... We should have ender tanks that we can make. We need an ender pearl or two. But other than that, we'll also need blaze rods, uh, which I don't think we've gotten any of those either. So that's uh, something we're going to want to keep an eye on. But we might at some point want to get an ender tank and a pump going... Uh, to, to get power. That might not be a terrible idea. Cool. So let's make our first magmatic engine. Uh, to make this, we're going to want you, one of you, two of you, and that looks cool. Nice. 
Uh, the magmatic engine, I guess I will put you back here for the time being. So you just need lava. I'm going to leave you on redstone control ignored, so it'll pretty much always run. Uh, let's get ourselves another one of those tanks. Um, just like we have out there at the smeltery. I could reuse the same one, but I'm going to get a new one. Uh, so it's just going to need iron and redstone. A little bit more redstone than I currently have on me. And a single piece of copper, that's bronze. And a little bit more glass. Cool. And that'll be a nice method of holding on to lava. I've got a bucket. I'm gonna go downstairs and fill it up. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is probably just, for now it's gonna have to be manual because I don't have any good way to automate getting lava and, and transferring it across a long distance. Um, but eventually we will probably want to get into the nether and start pumping that stuff up. Um, so that should be cool. So let's get this guy down and back in a minute once I've collected all this lava. That looks like a nice full tank. So this will just help augment our power production for the time being. Because the coal steam production is not terrible, um, but it's not, you know, great either. Alright, let's give it a shot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just pop this guy down here, right-click him to start dumping power into there. So this guy is producing 40 RF a tick, uh, and he should produce a decent amount of uh, power here. So that's just kind of like a little bit more passive way of generating power. We still need to supply a decent amount of lava. Um, that'll probably burn out relatively quickly, but at least we have another way of generating power here. Um, Let's look into that tree resin stuff, though, because that sounds cool. Uh, so resin you get with a resin funnel. Um, so basically you need a sawmill with an augment resin funnel, which needs copper plates, tin gears. Um, so to get the plates, um, interesting, really. I know there's a compressor. I thought there was a compressor. Copper plate. So there's a bunch of different copper plates, lots of different things added. Uh, compactor, that's what it's called. Compactor will get us copper plates. So a compactor will allow us to make plates. If we're following the thermal way of making plates, right? There's obviously a dozen other ways. But if we got a resin funnel and a sawmill, uh, we could totally get ourselves some resin which we can then put into a fractioning still, which needs some nickel, that doesn't look expensive, um, to make tree oil. Uh, and then tree oil gets us a million RF per bucket. It's not bad. Uh, so let's see, 100 millibuckets becomes 50 millibuckets. All right, so for each piece of wood that we get, if we're gonna go this route, we will get 10 millibuckets uh, with a resin funnel. And I'm assuming I can use like regular old oak wood on this, right? Like it doesn't show it in JEI, but I'm hoping that I can. I might need to test this in a single player world real quick. All right, before I went ahead and did this, I wanted to test it. So best way to learn mods, FYI. So you get 10 millibuckets per operation with this stuff. All right, good to know. So it does actually take a while to get a decent amount of sap. Mm. Oh, we don't get it from spruce, interesting. But we do get it from, from oak wood, which is cool. Interesting, we don't get it from birch either. But oak definitely, right? Works for me. All right, uh, best way to learn mods, if you are new to the modding scene, create another world that you cheat in. That's the way to learn, 100%. Um, so if you're not sure how something works, go cheat in a bunch of items, play with the mod, figure out how it works, and then go into your legit world uh, where you're not cheating and give that a try. All right, guys, so I've done a little testing uh, in that creative test world that I have, and I came up with a pretty good solution to power gen, I think, early game. It's gonna require a few machines and a bit of automated processing, but it should be really easy to get up and going. Uh, so let's do it. 
because it sounds cool. Um, what I decided I wanted to do is uh, refined fuel. So remember we, we were looking at that. It comes from naphtha in a fraction and still. We need crude oil. We don't need crude oil. We could also do liquefacted coal, uh, which you get by cooking down uh, coal in a magma crucible. And we can get that coal uh, from um, a pulverizer. So basically we want to do pulverizer, magma crucible, and then two uh, fractioning stills, and we should wind up uh, turning coal into refined fuel uh, through several steps and, and bits of effort. And the refined fuel actually generates quite a bit of power in your compression dynamo. So we will definitely, uh, I think, want to go ahead and do this. It, it generates 2 million RF per bucket, um, which is like a lot of RF. Um, it's it's really quite good. So let's do it. Um, let's totally do it. Like let's let's do it now. So to get started, we're gonna need um, another pulverizer, uh, which is this. Uh, we will also need a magma crucible, which I think I've got the stuff for. Uh, we need a couple of nether bricks, but that's not a problem. And some more invar, that's also not a problem. Uh, we'll also need some electrum, which is not a problem because we can get that from our fancy new induction smelter. Uh, we can just put uh, silver and gold together to get electrum in there. Uh, and then we'll need some more, uh, we'll need two fractioning stills. Uh, so ultimately we're gonna need four machine frames and four redstone reception coils. And we're gonna need a nickel and copper gear, but the rest of that seems pretty straightforward, right? Uh, so let's get uh, a bunch of the stuff we're needing. So we're gonna want some nickel and some iron, a little bit of electrum. Uh, some copper probably and some tin uh, and we're also going to want uh, probably more glass than we have so that shouldn't be too hard of a request sand please let's go uh, dig up a little bit of stuff just a little bit more sand uh, and then what I'll do is craft some of these items off camera real quick and hopefully be able to set up um, what we want to get what we want to do That should be enough sand for now. So you smelt that up. Cool. Uh, While well, that's cooking, so that should be enough actually for the four that we need. Hey, wrong one. Uh, Tin gear. Four of these guys. And then we're going to want four of these dudes, right? And we're going to want two fractioning stills, uh, which is going to require in total um, four of you. And we're also going to need a bunch of redstone. I forgot about that. We're going to want ultimately probably four of these guys. Uh, and a nickel gear doesn't seem like it would be too hard to get one of. So uh, actually two. I forgot. We want two of them. And the glass. So we should be able to get one, two of these. Okay. We're also going to need that magma crucible, which needs um, some nether brick. So let's get eight nether rack smelting. And while we're waiting for that, let's get our invar gears times four. So we're going to need. Uh, so if we need four invar gears, we need sixteen invar. So let's let's do like uh, twelve and six. Does that sound good? 12 and 6 should be enough invar for us. Nice. There's one nether brick. Anything else we can get by way of this stuff? I'm going to wait. I'll get one of these guys because we're totally going to need one. Uh, let's get our pulverizer while we're waiting because we're going to need another one of these. Um, so for this, we're just going to need a couple copper gears, which shouldn't be too bad. And I think a piston. And now we should have everything we need for this except for the flint. Did I just get copper gears? Why were you telling me no? There you go. So pulverizer is done, fractioning still is done. Um, almost enough in bar for what we need, and this guy. Done. Cool. So uh, then we just need the magma crucible, which we may want to use. We'll definitely want more magma crucibles later down the line. Um, but for now, we'll be all right. Cool. Magma crucible. So this should be the, the, the line of stuff that we need. Let's also snag a little bit more lead um, so that we can make more of these guys. 
cool. Um, what do I want this setup to be? That's a really good question. Um, what I should probably consider doing. is maybe clearing out a little bit of space back here. Now, eventually we're going to move into like a proper base with a proper house and all that stuff. But uh, until we get to that point, uh, we can we can we can do this. This will be like a, a temporary little setup here. So you're going to do that. And I'm going to actually use my wrench just for visual purposes to disconnect that guy because we don't want to actually have him connecting. Let's run some lines under here. And like this wall is going to be my wall of refined oil making. Does that sound cool? So I think all we need to do is put down our pulverizer, followed by our magma crucible, followed by our two fractioning stills. Okay, And I'm going to configure you so that you output to the right. Um, so you're going to grind coal into coal dust and push it to the right. You're going to be configured to accept from the left and push out to the right. So that's going to turn coal dust into liquefacted coal. You're going to accept from the left and push out to the right. Uh, and that's going to, to dump out the naphtha. And then you're going to accept naphtha from the left and push out to eh, maybe the top. Yeah. And I'm going to make another tank for that. So you all should be having power now, and you should all pretty much be good to go. Um, I'm going to get 40 coal and just drop it in there, and let's see what happens. While that's cooking, let's get another tank. Uh, so we're going to want another one of you and you. I'm going to put the tank right here so he can start accepting that naphtha fuel stuff. So pulverized coal gets turned into liquefacted coal, which is immediately dumped into here. Liquefacted coal is fractioned into naphtha. And then the naphtha, um, we get, I think it's 100 liquefacted coal becomes 50 naphtha. And then we need 100 naphtha. So we need two processes of that um, to get our refined fuel. So this is a fuel refining system. It basically is getting us, like turning coal into a better fuel source. Uh, and refining it into you know much better stuff and then it's all going to land right in here you can kind of see a little pool of stuff uh, a compression dynamo will be required so let's get one of those uh that's going to require a couple tin gears and a piece of silver So that compression dynamo, so the magma, the, the lava is actually doing a pretty good job uh, of powering our stuff. And um, if we wanted to at some point, let's, let's re I'm not going to need my steam dynamo anymore because I'm going to want to have all of my, I'm not going to want to just put coal in a steam dynamo. It's going to be inefficient at this point uh, to do it this way. So let's put you actually in here for now. That should be cool. Put away some metals. And you can make more glass for me. Cool. So you've got um, some fuel going on. Another thing I think I'd like to do... Can I make a hardened upgrade? Because a hardened upgrade would be nice. It just requires invar and a bronze gear. That seems totally cool. Do I have four invar? I do. Uh, we're going to need more bronze. But that's not a problem because we have this guy make bronze for us as well. Sweet. Uh, what else do I need for an bar? That's about it. Just some redstone. So you're going to make bronze directly. Cool. Um, bronze gear. That works. And an invar upgrade. So these upgrades can be applied to all the machines and to the compression dynamo and dynamos. There's basically um, several upgrade kits. Uh, there is bronze, followed by reinforced, which requires electrum and silver gears. We also need some hardened glass, which we don't have access to yet. We need some machines. <laughs> Actually, we might have access to be able to do that. I think we can get hardened glass now that we have 
um, the induction smelter. And then you need Signalum is the next tier, and Resonant is the last tier. So each of these upgrades will improve your machines uh, a little bit, but it also gives you access to these augments. So notice how we don't have access to augments right now, uh, or up here, right? So let's snag this dude, okay? Um, I'm gonna just, for now, Remove this. We'll make sure that you're set to always running. And we'll pop this guy here and we'll let the fluid flow in. Nice. So we've got refined, we've got 700 millibuckets of refined fuel. I'm going to go let you collect all the refined fuel that you're doing. So I don't know exactly how many, uh, how much refined fuel we'll get. Also, we'll get side effects from some of this. There's a few side uh, items we get. We get some sulfur, which we will probably need later on. And we also get tar. Uh, which can be used to create torches or sticky pistons uh, or leads. But you can also like smelt it. You can use it to get creosote oil. There's a few things you can do with tar. Um, but we're continuing to get naphtha and even more sulfur, which is cool. I'll store that in this chest with my other dusts. Um, so this guy by itself will create 40 RF a tick. But simply throwing the hardened upgrade kit in there, boom. Now it's only doing 60. Nice. And then there's augments we can throw in because the first hardened upgrade kit gives us access to one augment slot. Further upgrade kits will give us access to further augment slots. And there's a bunch of augments we can put into this thing. Uh, if you take a look at the augment line, uh, thermal expansion, there's, so this is a machine augment. You can see it says machines, it increases the processing speed. Um, and it also, so basically it makes it run faster, but use more power. Um, this is, uh, increases the chance of a secondary output. Um, destroys excess secondary output, so if you don't want to keep cleaning out stuff. Trivection chamber is a nice output uh, upgrade for, for smelting because it doubles any food that you cook, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's a bunch of upgrades for all kinds of stuff. Some of them are specializations, which means that um, it changes the functionality of the machine a little bit. Um, one thing that we might want to look at, so there's this guy, auxiliary transmission coil. It basically increases the power generation. It makes you generate more RF per tick. And you can see it goes in dynamos, um, but overall it produces less energy. So it's like less efficient, but more power RF. Um, and then there's an augment to increase fuel efficiency, which is pretty neat. Um, so for now, I'm, ugh, what do I want to do? Do I want to increase it? Like that would be kind of cool. Um, you can swap these in and out, by the way, as much as you want. So silver, let's do, let's do that. Uh, let's try it out. So I'm going to do the, this one. So if I dropped this guy in here, boom, now we're producing 120 RF a tick instead of 60. See how cool that is? Uh, if we did fuel catalyzer, it wouldn't directly show us, but you'd see that we would get more RF per fuel, basically. Uh, there's a couple other ones we can do. Side advanced throttle, dynamos. There's a specialization, I think. Magmatic, compression. Coolant is no longer consumed. That's kind of a nice one. Compression dynamo greatly increases power generation and efficiency. Only refined fuel can be used. So this makes a specialized compression dynamo that makes it so that refined fuel is even better. That requires pyrothium dust, uh, hardened glass, and signalum gear. That might be a little bit harder to make right now. So let's go with this one for now, but we will maybe work next episode towards getting ignition plugs. That would be kind of neat. Uh, so let's turn this guy on. Uh, all we need to do is give him some water. Um, now, just like the steam, it's going to use up some of that water. Uh, there is an upgrade, closed loop cooling, which makes it so that coolant is no longer consumed, but you do have to put coolant in there. Also, there's other types of coolant. Um, the best way to, to check out what other types of coolant there are is to look up cryothium. Um, and look up the uses of cryothium, there's a coolant tab, and you can see um, what all the different coolants are. So there's gelled cryothium, there's distilled water, which is a little bit better than regular water, and then there's IC2 coolant, which is um, pretty good. So gelled cryothium is your best, but we don't really, that's more of an end or end game kind of thing. But for now, we're producing a lot more RF per tick than we were when we started this whole little operation, and refined fuel is gonna last a really long time. You can see we're going to burn through water pretty quickly. Um, there you go. But, I mean, we haven't even used 100 millibuckets of refined fuel yet. It is still going. So this stuff lasts a really long time, and that's pretty cool. So one thing I'd like to do is maybe get the augment in there that makes it so you don't use up... Um, let's 
see. What is the cost of this? Uh, we need cryothium dust and hardened glass. So we might look into doing that next episode. We have, though, totally burned past the wrapping up point for this episode, though. So we're going to come back next episode and play a little bit more of this stuff. So for now, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. This is worth it. Trust me. Way super worth it. Way better than Steam. Um, and we haven't even put in the upgrade that increases power gen and efficiency yet. So going through the effort of processing your coal into refined fuel, 100% worth it. Totally a cool thing to do. Uh, plus you get tar, which is neat, and you can use it for things. I don't know exactly what I'm going to use it for, but it looks cool. Um, so for now, Dowel 20 is signing off. We've got another 1,300. So we got a total of 2,000. So we got two buckets of fuel um, from 40 coal, right? And according to JEI, that's going to be about 4 million RF. So we're actually going to be in really good shape with RF production from that. Um, I would like to get the closed loop coolant so I don't have to keep feeding water in, but that's really kind of optional because at some point soon I could probably automate water. Um, and it might be worth it to automate water so we don't have to waste an upgrade slot on closed loop cooling because water we can automate pretty easily. Uh, but we'll look into that. For now, Devil 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.